This is a scary story that happened to a doctor named Coco. During her internship at a hospital, she repeatedly encountered horrors. The first time was when Coco and the female head of the department were on duty together during the night shift. It was almost 12 o'clock at night, so the head of the department was feeling hungry. She asked Coco if she wanted something to eat. Coco, also feeling hungry since she only had eaten a bowl of noodles earlier that afternoon. Coco immediately got out of her seat, happily asked the chief doctor what she wanted to eat and decided to go to the convenience store which was opposite to the hospital to buy something. At the first time when she was placed to work at this hospital, Coco did not dare to walk the corridors alone at night because it was very long and dark. The surrounding space was silent. Only the sound of footsteps echoed. It would make people feel frizzy at first, but after time they would get used to it. Coco stepped out of the hospital and slowly crossed the street to see the convenience store right in front of her. Halfway across the street the light from oncoming traffic lights made her feel dizzy. Coco turned her back to look back and realized it was a large bus. The appearance of the bus made Coco feel very strange, because buses like this didn't usually run late at night. Although she was not far away, she could not see the bus properly. The inside was blurry and looked very dim behind the lights. Coco did not care much about it as she quickly walked into the convenience store nearby. After choosing some items to buy, Coco brought them to the checkout counter to pay. The payment was quick and less than 10 minutes. Coco walked out of the store. Standing right opposite the hospital, Coco suddenly saw the blurry bus parking in front of the hospital gate, as if it was waiting for guests. Two minutes later, Coco saw two people walking out from the hospital gate. One was an old man who dressed in a black fabric shirt. The other, a young girl who was wearing a crimson red dress. After the two of them got into the vehicle, the bus turned around and drove away. Coco returned to the office. She did not know that there was a bus stop in front of the hospital gate, so she immediately asked the head of the department to confirm this new information. The head of the department also said that there was indeed a bus stop in front of the hospital gate, but it usually finished at 9 o'clock at night. At this point, Coco blurted out what she just witnessed. The head of the department did not believe her. She assumed that Coco was mistaken, because there could not be any buses running at 12 o'clock at night. Coco once again firmly asserted that what she saw was a bus, and that there's no way she could be mistaken in its appearance. When she finished listening to Coco, the head of the department seemed to remember something, and looked like she had a bit of a shock on her face. Coco became aware of this, which sparked more intrigue in her mind as the head doctor's strange expression made her feel subconsciously scared for what's to come. The head doctor didn't explain anything. She suddenly got up and walked out. At the same time, she said that what Coco saw reminded her of something. Seeing the head doctor's strange appearance, Coco could not help but follow her curiously. In the hallway the head of the department was walking and recalling a month ago. There was a nurse on night duty and she also saw a bus stop in front of the hospital to pick up passengers. The head doctor was suspicious of something. She immediately led Coco to find the nurse who was on night duty and asked if there were any patients who died tonight. The nurse on duty immediately replied that two patients had just passed away. She also felt strange for some reason as the head doctor took care of the deceased patient. After getting the answer, the head of the department continued to ask for more information about the two dead people. The nurse on duty was surprised and said that the two had just passed away were an old man and a young girl. Due to their critical illness, the hospital was unable to treat them in time. Coco was surprised to hear this and immediately confirmed whether the two deceased were a person dressed in black and the other wearing a red dress. Suddenly the nurse next to her was astonished. She wondered how Coco was able to tell what the two deceased patients looked like. The nurse went on to confirm that the two died just as Coco described it. The old man died first. He was dressed in a robe by the family earlier in the hospital. 
The young girl had suffered a stroke and died two hours later in the red dress she wore before coming to the hospital. Coco was stunned and in dismay for a few minutes when she realized that the two people she saw must have been ghosts. Seeing Coco's unstable expression, the two nurses expressed concern and couldn't help but wonder what happened to her. At this point, the head of the department told the two nurses what Coco had seen. The story shocked the two nurses. They became more and more worried because something similar had happened before. Last month, a night shift nurse accidentally saw a lot of people picked up by a bus at the hospital gate. Later, she found out that they were all dead patients from the hospital. Since then, everyone assumed that it was a bus coming from the underworld to pick up the souls of the dead. The second thing that Coco witnessed happened in the hospital's pediatric department. That night, Coco was on shift duty. In her spare time, she went online to read the news for entertainment. At this moment, Coco suddenly heard a lot of loud footsteps, children and laughter in the hallway outside the door. Children were active. They joked and ran loudly in front of Coco's office, which made her feel very strange. It was almost 12 o'clock at night. Usually the kids should have gone to bed already. Out of curiosity, Coco decided to go outside and take a look. She opened the door, leaned forward and looked out. The lights in the corridor were switched on alternate. There were dark and light spaces. Coco looked into the direction where there were footsteps and children sounds but could not see anyone. Coco turned her head to the opposite direction, still unable to see anyone. She, she thought she must have misheard something, so she intended to go back into the room and then close the door slowly. However, when Coco was about to close the door shut, from the end of the hall there suddenly came a burst of children's giggles. Coco immediately stepped out and suddenly saw a figure of a boy running across the corner of the dark corridor. Coco did not think much and quickly chased after the child to see what he was up to. She ran to the end of the hallway and then turned into a dark corner of the hospital. Finally, Coco saw a boy standing by the window. Coco walked over and gently told the boy to go back to the resting room. At the same time, she asked why the boy was not sleeping since it was late. Hearing Coco's question, the boy slowly turned around. It turned out that this was the patient's room 402. The boy suddenly laughed happily, saying that he was playing chase chase with a little girl, so he didn't want to go to bed early. Coco looked back, but did not see a little girl he was talking about, and urged him to go back to his room to sleep. Having to go back to the room, the boy expressed regret. Although Coco said that there were no girls here, the boy insisted that the girl next door asked him to go out. Coco wondered and asked him which room he was referring to. The boy immediately responded to information regarding the little girl he had met. There was apparently a child in room 401 with a very cute ponytail. Hearing the boy's description, Coco realized who it was because she had recognized a similar description about this patient earlier. Coco led the boy back to the hospital room and at the same time told him not to go out at night even if someone called. Coco was very worried at this time. She turned her gaze towards the empty hallway as if she was afraid of something. After that, she hurried back to her office. Here, in this place, her chest gradually relaxed the tension and anxiety. The boy's words made her head numb for a moment. Her hands and feet were also covered with goosebumps. Because the little girl in room 401 that the boy described accurately just passed away more than two days ago.